Dr. Ito is the founder of the International Center for Holistic Law. A former corporate lawyer turned public interest environmental lawyer, she's toured extensively with AMA, one of India's foremost spiritual teachers and humanitarians. She's currently leading a citizen's initiative seeking to have the rights of Mother Nature embedded in the legal system of the 28-nation European Union. In the EU, we've had um, participatory democracy as a fairly new invention. Um, started in February 2011 um, with the European Citizens Initiative. And um, what the European Citizens Initiative allows us to do in Europe is that um, seven citizens from seven member states um, can propose a law to the European Commission. And provided um, we raise at least a million signatures across at least seven member states with a de minimis of about 0.01 percent of the population of at least seven countries, um, then the European Commission have to consider passing that law. Oh, and it, but that's a big task. That's seven countries and, and uh, you know, well, I guess several million signatures if you've got to get to that percentage of the population. Eh? That's right. And um, what what makes it really helpful for citizens is that um, the European Union allows us to collect signatures online. And so we can run it as um, an online petition campaign, use social media and um, all of the rest. Basically, what we're looking to do, um, it's well known that um, we are facing unprecedented um, environmental issues. And in my experience um, as an environmental lawyer, um, I can see that um, the current system of environmental law that we have, which um, is pretty much based on a paradigm of nature as property, um, restricts um, citizens to having to bring cases through the planning and the administrative courts. And so it's very difficult for communities um, to protect nature um, per se. So the initiative that we're bringing is following the emerging paradigm that's appearing throughout the world in countries like Ecuador and Bolivia, in municipalities throughout the United States, um, of recognizing um, a natural law approach. Um, so recognizing nature's inherent rights um, to thrive and to flourish. So our, our European Citizens Initiative is um, for recognizing and respecting the inherent rights of nature. With holistic law, what we found was that um, holistic law didn't really have a place until all beings appeared on the scene. And it was when all beings, or a consideration of all beings, were included in the framework. It was at that point that the mainstream adversarial system really didn't know how to deal with the situation, but holistic law was there in its entirety to meet it. And from that, I just got the clear insight that um, the rights of nature is something that would really bring about the change, the systemic change that we need to evolve um, our legal systems to really meet the challenges um, that we're all facing globally today. Um, and from that, um, I learned about the ECI and I thought, well, it's obvious we'll bring a European citizens initiative to get the rights of nature recognized um, in Europe. If I can tease out one little thing there that, that, that strikes me as interesting is when you say that all, when you mention all beings, in a sense that's what the rights of nature does, isn't it? Is, it? is that it it expands your sense of the community that has standing and has rights and whose interests need to be considered and, and are, have legitimately have, need to be considered. It expands that from humans and human structures to the entire earth community. Absolutely. And so that changes the, it, you're not just changing the rules, you're changing the, the definition of, of who the courts should be serving and what the, uh, what the community is, what the dimensions of the community are. Yes, right? absolutely. It, um, it brings it to, um, for me, a more um, real construction of law. After all, nature moves according to its, its own laws. And we are also part of nature. I mean, our bodies were made up of the five elements, just like everything else. And um, so nature's laws bind us. Our laws don't bind nature. 
nature carries on, <laughs> irrespective of what human beings decide is the truth. So given that nature's laws bind us, one would see that um, if nature didn't exist and thrive, we wouldn't exist and thrive as well. So in that sense, everything that we call a human right derives from the rights of nature. If nature doesn't have a, a right to exist and thrive, how can we have a right to exist and thrive? Because our very existence is dependent upon nature. Um, and so all it's doing really is just um, aligning, just expanding and evolving um, our laws to recognize that um, when we talk about community, we exist within a much wider community and it's a community of all beings we share this planet with, and that's the plants, that's the mountains, the rivers. Um, we are intrinsically interdependent, and um, it's just natural that um, if law is really um, going to meet um, the promise of the world that we would like to create um, for our children and our grandchildren, um, that, um, that it needs to expand its ambit um, and recognize all of the relationships that we have. Mumta Ito, the young British lawyer who's determined to see the rights of nature recognized by the legal system of the European Union. In connection with our Green Rights film project, The Green Interview has lately been interviewing green lawyers from around the world. Cormac Cullinan in South Africa, for example, Pablo Fajardo in Ecuador, Michelle Maloney in Australia, Daniel Salaberry in Argentina. We'll be releasing these interviews throughout 2014. If they aren't yet posted when you see this, they soon will be. For The Green Interview and for The Green Rights Documentary Project, I'm Silver Donald Cameron.